Cricket, a game of glorious uncertainties, has witnessed many legends. But there's one name that resonates with sheer dynamism and unmatched power, Lance Klusner. Known for his aggressive batting and fast medium swing bowling, Klusner is regarded as one of the best all-rounders in the world during the 1990s and early 2000s and one of the pioneers of power batting as a finisher. He is often remembered for his 1999 Cricket World Cup heroics, but wait, his legacy extends far beyond the World Cup. So buckle up cricket enthusiasts as we delve into the extraordinary journey of a man who redefined the term Game Changer. Picture this, the late 90s, an era when cricket was dominated by some of the greatest. And then, like a hurricane, came Lance Klusner. Born in Durban, South Africa, Klusner burst onto the scene with a style and intensity that was unparalleled. Klusner or Zulu, as he was famously called due to the fact that he spoke Zulu language fluently, grew up on his parents' sugarcane farm and was a thorough country boy. His father played polo and cricket was nowhere in the horizon. It was mainly during his military services days after school that he started to like cricket and drew everyone's attention. As a bowler, Klusner had a unique side on action wherein his stride began with a hop while his bowling arm came in front of his eyes as if he were taking aim at where he wanted to pitch the ball. The combination of his upbringing and three years in the army contributed to a straightforward approach in his bowling. Hit the batsman's head if you can't hit the stumps. This was exactly what the great Malcolm Marshall looked for. And as a matter of fact, Malcolm Marshall was then Natal's overseas player in the first class cricket season. And there, Klusner was drafted into the same team in 93-94 season. So, Malcolm Marshall took Klusner under his wings and his guidance proved to be the X factor in Klusner's career. Within no time, he flourished under Marshall's guidance, establishing their reputation as a man for a crisis. In 1996, Klusner made his debut at Kolkata and was welcomed into international cricket by rampant Mohammad Azruddin, who hammered him with five consecutive boundaries. Klusner was smashed for 75 runs in just 14 overs in his first innings in international cricket. And usually, it was enough to scar any quality bowler for life. But Klusner, probably taking from his years of army training as a youngster, took it in his stride and bounced back. And how? In the second innings, he stunned everyone with a probing and destructive swell of 8 wickets for 64. And that too, on a flat Eden Gardens pitch. His bowling figures of 8 for 64 is regarded as the best bowling figures by a South African bowler on test debut. In his four test appearances, he registered the then fastest ever test century by a South African when he raced to the milestone of just 100 balls against India in 1997. And also, he achieved it while batting at number 9 position. With that never say die attitude, Klusner soon made a name for himself as an exciting aggressive all rounder in the true sense of the word. He knew where and how to apply his aggression and always found a way to pierce the gaps and clear the boundary. Whether it was chasing down a target or rescuing his team from the brink of defeat, Klusner was the man for the job. His fearless approach and unyielding determination made him the go-to guy in crunch situations. His presence on the field and the times when he was handed the ball or walked out to bat gave the fans a sense of assurance. Calm down and trust Klusner. He could infuse life into a match any moment by changing the dynamics either by his hasty striking abilities or by his fierce medium fast bowling. His fearless and nonchalant approach while batting gave his team the confidence to be optimistic in the unlikeliest of scenarios. And this was clearly evident in the 1999 Cricket World Cup, which was the pinnacle of Klusner's career. South Africa's journey was defined by just one man. And that man was Lance Klusner. South Africa had progressed to the semi-finals and Klusner until then had an excellent tournament, taking 17 wickets and scoring 250 runs in 8 matches and building a reputation as a hard-hitting batsman in tight situations. During the tournament, he remained not out in 5 consecutive innings which yielded 214 runs without being dismissed. And actually, he still holds the record for not having dismissed in most consecutive innings in World Cup matches. Due to his all-round performances with the bat and ball during the World Cup, 
He topped the ICC rankings for all-rounders with a rating of 521 points. He showed his temperament in every match for South Africa, either with a bat or ball, with performances including 3 for 66 against India, 52 runs for 45 balls and 3 for 21 against Sri Lanka, 48 not out and 1 for 16 against England, 46 not out and 1 for 41 against Pakistan, 2 for 46 against New Zealand, 36 runs against Australia in Super 6 round or 31 of 16 balls against Australia in the semi-final. Although South Africa were eliminated from the semi-final, his contribution cannot be ignored. As with the help of Klusner, South Africa got really close to advancing to the finals. And due to his efforts, he was named the man of the tournament in 1999 Cricket World Cup. Now let me tell you about an incident which is not known by many people, even though South Africa crashed out from the 1999 World Cup in a bizarre manner. When Klusner returned home, he was stunned by the heroic reception he received, not only from the fans, but also from an unexpected person, Nelson Mandela. He had called Klusner and congratulated him on his heroics and all he had done for the nation. And if you are getting a call from a person like Nelson Mandela, then surely you have done something really outstanding. Klusner is one of four batsmen who have batted at all 10 positions. This shows his quality to play at any position. He claimed 6 5 wicket hauls in ODIs, having one more than Sean Pollock, who has 5 5 wicket hauls. That he batted the most at number 8 is a testimony to South Africa's all round depth in the period. But the fact that he averaged 58.6s while striking at 92.30 from there is a record of how good a finisher he was. In an age where strike rates of 70 were commonplace, Clues' death over highs became a rage. Between 1999 and 2004, Zulu made over a thousand runs from number 6 or lower position at a strike rate of 97.79 and an average of 60.05. No one else hit as many runs, scored at a better average or struck at a better strike rate than him or hit more 50s batting from number 6 position. Klusner remained unbeaten 42 times in ODIs in that period, again the most by anyone. 19 of those came in run chases where he plundered runs at a strike rate of 98.03. South Africa won 12 of those and tied two others. To put things into perspective, Michael Bevan, hailed as the original finisher, had 18 unbeaten knocks in run chases, but struck runs at a rate of 65.79. Bevan's strike rate is hardly ever a talking point when discussing him as the first ever finisher in ODIs. It didn't need to be given the team around him. For Klusner, even in a team that had several heroes, he was often the last man standing single-handedly doing the hard toil to construct a building from scratch quite a lot of times. Klusner's madness had a method to it. Each of his cameos had the sting of a viral tweet. He brought emotion, technique and composure to a role that was previously reserved only for those who could bowl fast and hold a bat. He could bowl, even had an 8 for on test debut, but Klusner's magic was his batting and the zeal and fervor he brought into it. In the early 2000s, his career was marred by controversies and rifts with the newskeeper Graeme Smith. He was denied a contract in 2003, mainly because he wasn't a team man according to Smith. At 33, Kluzer's career came to a premature end and years later, sadly, he's remembered more for the 1999 watch-up job than the other stunning finishes he regularly saw off for his team. Despite an inglorious ending to his international career, Personally, I will remember Kluzna as one of the most exciting entertainers of the game, which was what he strived for. In the grand tapestry of cricket, Lance Kluzna carved a niche for himself. A niche filled with explosive sixes, nerve-wracking finishes and a legacy that continues to inspire. Thank you Lance Kluzna for giving us moments that will be etched in our memories forever. So guys, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more cricket content. And also, comment down and let me know who do you think was a better finisher, Lance Klusner or Michael Bevan.